Hey everyone, hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Wiens. I'm in Surat Thani in the south of Thailand. This is a city with a lot of character and a lot of delicious food. And in this video, we are gonna go, actually today, all day long, we are gonna go on an ultimate street food tour of Surat Thani. We're gonna eat everything from Southern Thai curries for breakfast, which is one of my favorite things to eat in the world, uh, to some legendary noodle restaurants and some legendary restaurants in Surat Thani, and even street oysters. So in this video, we are gonna go on an ultimate tour of Surat Thani, and I'm gonna share all of the food with you today in this video. To begin this food tour of Surat Thani, we're driving outside of town because there's a place that's famous, especially in the morning for breakfast for Khao Rat Gang, which is rice and curry. Now that's gonna be the first place that we're gonna go. We're gonna begin with rice and curry and then we'll be coming back to the center of Surat Thani to eat a lot more food, street food. There's nothing I like better in life than rice and curry for breakfast. <laughs> Made it, we arrived, that was a 20 minute drive from the center of Surat Thani and we're still in the city but kind of on the outskirts. Uh, this place is called Khao Gang Nok. There's the sign, Nok Khun Tong. And it's 9 a.m. and you gotta get here before 9 a.m. or they start to sell out of the, the best dishes. And so we got here just before 9 a.m. and good thing we got here too because already some of the dishes are low, some of the dishes are about to sell out, but the one thing that you have to eat here is called pad pet, which is like a, not necessarily, okay, not necessarily dry, but like a spicy fry, but we got the beef. Like with all rice and curry in Thailand, there's two ways to order. One is called rat khao, which is where you get rice and then you just choose a couple dishes to put right directly on top of the rice. Then you got a one single plate meal. But if you want more amounts, bigger quantities, a bigger meal, you order gap khao, which is rice, and then you order side dishes, little bowls of all the dishes. So we're going big. This is the type of breakfast that makes me the most excited in the world. And we got three different dishes. Um, one is actually four different dishes because Micah got some, we got some fried pork from fried pork, pork belly, which she then chops up. Uh, but then this one here is uh, gang baduk, which is a catfish curry. And that looks awesome, the coconut milk in there. But the main dish that I wanted to try here is the pad pet, which is like the chili curry paste, not too saucy, but still wet. Okay, that's just, well, let's just eat it. But that's with beef, uh, but there's lots of spices in there. It's known for being spicy. And then also some gang som with, I believe it's a freshwater fish actually, like a river fish. And then also whenever you eat Southern Thai food, especially khao gang, like this rice and curry, you have a whole plate of raw vegetables with some nampik, some chili dip shrimp paste over there, which looks like it has mango in it. Okay, let's start with that catfish curry. Oh, this looks amazing. The thickness of that curry paste, the herbs in there. It could be bayira, maybe. Mm -hmm. Tree basil, right? Yeah. And you add a bit more of the curry sauce. Making sure to break off the little piece, the, the fillets without getting too many bones. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh, that flavor is amazing. The rich coconut milk, the chilies in there, what really sets it apart, what makes a difference, what like elevates the flavor is the bayira. Tree basil leaves the, the herb in there that just like, it just, that is such an herbaceous, such a green, such a like almost licorice kind of flavor to it. Wrapped up with that coconut milk, with the soft tender, just like melt in your mouth, catfish. Spectacular. Mm -hmm. oh, 
well. Because I need to have some of the pet pet nua. And you can just see the capier lime leaves, the herbs in there as well. Wow. So the black pepper flavor and the citrusiness of the capier lime leaves, which are all sliced up in there. Oh, that's outstanding. And the tenderness of that beef. Like, that curry paste, the spice, the black pepper in there, and then contrasted by the kaffir lime leaves. Oh, it's awesome. On that note, I will go for some cashew leaves. In the numpring. Oh, the numpring is awesome too. The green mango, the sour green mango, the umami of the shrimp paste. And then the, the cashew tree leaves, which are so like chalky, so sour, so... Oh yeah, that's sour and chalky. And the, the flavor just keeps on coming. I'll try some of the kai luk kai, which yeah, it literally translates to son-in-law's eggs. And it usually has kind of a tamarind sauce in it with shallots, like a sweet tamarind sauce. Just kind of like a, a glorified hard boiled, soft boiled egg. The yolk is really amazing because it's not overcooked, so it's not dry or starchy. Not too sweet. And you taste kind of like that tamarind fruitiness of it, contrasted by the, the crispy shallots. Okay, the gang's home. Yeah, she said to be careful of the bones on this fish. The sourness of that, not too spicy, but you really taste the turmeric and the sourness. It doesn't taste like a lime juice sourness, it's more of a, a mango. I think it might be the green mango in there that gives it the, the sourness. Try some of the fried pork. Oh yeah, that is pretty good. He was telling me that the fried pork is pretty good. The three layer texture of fat, meat, fat, and then like all wrapped up in like a crunchy, not too overly thick batter. Mm. Some of these long beans kind of as chopsticks. Pick up some of that numbrik. Okay. Okay. I'm circling around back to the kaffir curry. Be careful of the bones. Mm. That flavor, overwhelmingly delicious. Just exciting, thrilling for the taste buds. Mm. Oh, that's tasty. And do not miss their pad pet here too. With beef, it's remarkable. The black pepper flavor contrasted with that kaffir lime citrusiness. They keep bringing us more dishes. Um, this one is gai tom min, uh, which is uh, chicken boiled with Turmeric, the, it's so yellow because of turmeric, but there's lots of lemongrass in there. And I think there's the langal, and then like some blood chunks as well. Oh yeah, it's not spicy, but that's just like chicken soup with an edge of flavor because it's sour. You taste the lemongrass, you taste the turmeric. It's just like glorified chicken soup. A blood. Coagulated blood, blood chunk. It just goes down so easily, blood jelly. And now that I look closer at the gang song, I think some of the sourness is coming. I think that little piece, um, I believe that's pot tamarind in English. That's providing some of that sourness in that broth. They said, every time you're welcome, come back here, but give us a call so that we save some dishes for you. They're so cool, they're so nice. Oh wow, that wall. 
Just get your flavor taste buds just going to the max. So the next place that we're going is directly inside of Suratani town and it's gonna be another breakfast actually. A very, very famous place, but totally complete, like polar opposites of flavor of food. Totally different breakfast style. This place is called Ran Kai Dao, which is fried egg restaurant. It is a classic Chinese Western breakfast restaurant and known for their fried eggs, known for their sausages, known for their ham. You can get hot dogs, you can get like fried toast. Uh, we got here like at the end of breakfast, so like I think they've already finished frying, but they, we got some fried toast, we got some sausages, and she's gonna make us some fried eggs and sausage, and I think we got we got, we got with a fried pork plate. A classic breakfast spot. The antiques, the like different products that they have, the different, the like painting of this place. Uh, this is about as completely opposite of a breakfast as possible as what we just ate from rice and curry. This is more Thai Chinese Western breakfast. And along with the fried egg plate, another thing that you have to order when you come here is the kind of bang namu, which is like toast, and then you that comes along with some sausage that they're kind of like hand rolling. I guess I'll just start with the toast. And you can see the layer. It's toast, but then there's a layer of minced meat spread, like spread on top and then deep fried until it's fried all together. That is pretty tasty. <laughs> it's like, that's meat jam. Then like deep fried onto it. So it's like deep fried together. And then that's served along with some of these sausages, which they hand roll. And they kind of wrap in some kind of like a wrapper and deep fry them as well. Oh, the more you keep on chewing, the more porky it is. And it kind of has this unique, kind of almost like gummy texture to it. Move on to the fried eggs. Um, and I'll try that with a piece of the fried pork. There are two main seasonings. So we have sauce brick, which is like a, it's a, actually a chili sauce, but it tastes a little more like ketchup. It's not spicy at all. And sauce Maggie, which is similar to soy sauce. I'm a sauce Maggie kind of guy. Ooh. Try that with a piece of the, the sausage, which is kind of like a hot dog. With the sauce Maggie, that's awesome. I'm not a huge fan of the hot dogs. And the, the fried pork is pretty tasty too, along with those eggs. To balance the fried eggs and the fried pork, of course. And this restaurant is kind of quiet now, because we're here at the very end, they're about to close. But if you come here at the peak of breakfast, like eight or 9 a.m., this place is packed. And then for the moment, I also got some Thai coffee. I love the atmosphere here, the retro aspect, the paint job, the location in downtown Surat Honey, Western style food culture and breakfast culture. <laughs> what are you doing? Here we are moving on. We're going to have like, it's actually just down the road, but it's another legendary restaurant that's known especially for their unique uh, noodle dish that's only available there in Surat Hani. is called Yok Kang and they like literally just opened already. It's packed on the inside. This is one of the most legendary restaurants in all of Suratani and it's right across the street from the Hokkien Chinese Temple Shrine. They serve some unique dishes, some 
rare or dishes that you won't find elsewhere. And the auntie, the grandma who makes the dish, she's classic, she's a legend, and I can't wait to try the food here. <laughs> So it's one of those restaurants where like there's multiple stations because it's so popular. You can get mango sticky rice at the front, but the main event are the noodles. And then adds in the different toppings, adds in some bean sprouts. There's some eggs, there's some tofu, there's some uh, pork chai tao, I think, which is uh, a radish, like pickled radish, and then adds in some soup. She is truly a noodle scientist. The way she works, the way she just flies on those noodle combination and just like making bowls of noodles flying on the ingredients, sloshing out ingredients, just like like slopping sauces around. She is a she's truly a gem, a legend of noodle creation. Wow, and again, the reflecting the Thai Chinese culture of Suratani. There's the entire inside is full. But luckily, we got some seats on the one outside table right now, which is perfect. Better for light and a little more air than the inside as well. And so our noodles should be ready soon. Okay, so that didn't take too long, luckily, because we got here early, right as they opened. Well, that looks good, too. Mango sticky rice. We'll save this for after we taste the noodles. But um, in order to make things a little more smooth, how you order is you have to find a table, then you sit down, then you get one of those check sheets, and then you have to like designate. You have your table here in the written in the corner here. You write your table, you write what you want, you check off what you want, then you hand it to them, and then you just sit and wait, and eventually we'll come and you just wait until it comes. First dish is the pakbung tai lao. And pakbung is the morning glory, which is down here. There's also bean sprouts. I'm pretty sure this is pig skin. There's some crunchy bits. This is the senmi, which are the noodles. There's eggs in here. There's fried shrimp. There's pork. There's so many things going on. And then this is the one where she scoops on a big scoop of that red kind of chili. And you can see all that red soup below there. So it's kind of actually a dry, it's not really a noodle soup. It's more of a, like a dry noodle. But look at the color of that sauce. You gotta mix the whole thing? Yeah. Okay. Mix it all up, get all those juices, all those sauces, all the red chili flowing. And now let's try the cucumber with the noodles, with the pig skin. Let's try the noodles first. Wow. Like it's a little bit sweet. It's a little bit sour. It's not nearly as spicy as it looks. Um, but the chili is more providing like that that red chili aroma taste as opposed to the heat. But it's kind of like a sweet chili sauce. What stands out to me is it's really refreshing. Like it's cool. It almost has like a briny pickle kind of taste to it. Um, like a slightly vinegary. And then just like the the crunch of the morning glory and the cucumber. It's like a very cooling bowl. Mm. Oh, that's awesome. It's a big crunchy fried shrimp with the shell on, so that magnifies the flavor. I could go with a little extra chili flakes though. And actually, it's quite sour already, but maybe one scoop of vinegar. With a little bit of extra chili. That's delicious. Okay, let's try the other bowl of noodles. 
a bit more like a classic bowl of noodles with the sen again the senmi, which is the angel hair vermicelli. Um, there's a variety of different pork. I think this might be fish, and then pork ribs. And look at that broth. Very aromatic. You can see some shallots in there and some green onions. Mm. It's really fragrant with the fried shallots and the fried garlic in there. It's immediately what you taste is that fried garlic. But this bowl of noodles is made for kreng pung, which are the, the different additions, different toppings for noodles. Chili flakes, I'll go with this chili vinegar this time. You gotta really mix it up. There's bean sprouts on the bottom there too. And there's some crunchy little things too. I'm not sure what that is. I saw her adding it. Let's try that. Mm. I don't know what that is, but it's delicious. It's like a, it tastes like chicken almost, like fried chicken skin. Could it be fried chicken skin? Or fried pork. It might be fried pork skin, but yeah, that is. That's just a little explosion of flavor and crunchiness in your mouth. And this bowl of noodles, it's good, but it's more of kind of like a, a clean, classic, just bowl of pork noodles. I think the more, the one that stands out more to me as being unique and the one I like better is the Pak Bung one with that red chili sauce. This one is more unique to me. This is the one I would go for. It's almost like a mix, like a salad, because of its cooling properties, because of the way it's like, it is served cool actually, in room temperature. And the pig skin, you know, just kind of like snaps. Before we finish the noodles, I may as well try the honey on momoyang with sticky rice and mango because it will start to turn brown probably and maybe get a little bit of equal ratios of both. Look at all of that coconut milk on top. All the coconut cream, the mung beans on there. It's so thick. Wow, oh that is amazing. That mango, literally, you do not need to chew that mango. You like push your lips together, push your gums together and it just like dissolves. It just like reduces into mango juice in your mouth. Oh, that's one of the better plates I've ever had. There's no way it gets more classic than a shop like this. The heritage, the history, the food, the amazing legends of Antis. The mango sticky rice, yeah. Okay, go for the noodles, but stay for the mango sticky rice. Like, <laughs> don't miss the mango sticky rice, it really is good. Look at Ying, she got four, four boxes of takeaway. <laughs> That's how you know it's good, when, when the wife orders takeaway. But anyway, it does not get more classic, more legendary than that, they're so cool. It's just a living piece of Suratani history. And yeah, it's just a place you have to visit when you're in Suratani. Within Thailand, Surat Thani is known for seafood and specifically oysters. Probably within Thailand, Surat Thani is the most famous for oysters in all of Thailand. And so there was no way we were gonna have a Surat Thani street food tour without eating oysters. And there happens to be an amazing stall. They serve, it, and it's like literally right along the street on the side of the road. It looks like kind of a car mechanic warehouse with like sprawling with seafood. There's all sorts of seafood, but the main thing to eat here is oysters. Uh, 
กาศเอาตัวใหญ่เอาสักเตัวตัวได้ครับแม่แล้วกำฟังยังไง This is just straight up a street shellfish. It's literally like market to table. Um, they have mostly mussels, blood cockles, but main event here are the oysters. Um, and they just shuck them right here. They prepare them Thai style with seafood sauce and the the seasoning ingredients. And so you just like, order by the piece. You can order other things too. They also have a whole rack of fish grilling as well. But I came here for the oysters. That's awesome. That is one way to shuck an oyster. Just bang it with an axe, and that just pops open. Those are big. Those are meaty. Those are fresh oysters. This is the definition of a seafood market to table experience and you just you order right here they cook it they shuck it and you come sit down right here and you eat it we ordered up a platter of seven of their plumpest, juiciest, fattest oysters. Those are just like thick, the meat in there. They're literally hand-sized oysters. And I think they're just over a dollar per oyster, 40 baht per, per oyster um, of this size. That chunky, juicy membrane of them. And then the Thai style to eat it, uh, I'll just show you. Well, this guy, this guy looks perfect. Look at the thick, plumpness, the thick plumpness of that oyster. First, a little bit of pick pow, which is the roasted chili sauce. A little bit of that goes on. Chili jam. Next up for the hom jiao, these are crispy shallots. Crispy fried shallots, yeah. That goes on. And then finally, you want to load it up with seafood sauce. I'm gonna load it up with Thai seafood sauce. This is green chilies um, and garlic, and probably some sugar. Is that even a one biter? Yeah. You can? <laughs> That's a massive oyster one butter. <laughs> wow. And then you have to taste it. Taste it with gatin. Wow. Now that is an overwhelming oyster experience mm. but like the the beautiful sliminess of the oyster the texture of it see the oysters are not too salty and then just with those toppings you got the crispy hot fragrant shallots the roasted chili jam which is sweet the seafood sauce all of that just wrapped up just combined into an ultimate oyster mouthful experience We also got one kilo of poi maleng pu, which are mussels, which they steam, or actually I think they boil it with some herbs with uh, lemongrass. Pop these guys open. I do love mussels. Quick dip in the seafood sauce. Mm. Mm. Oh yeah, those are delicious. The freshness, the sweetness of them, that texture too. I do love mussels. And this really is, uh, a shellfish snacking paradise. Mm. The mussels are awesome. And actually these, I have to admit, these oysters are almost too big to be one biters. Like just, yeah, just slightly too big. So I think it is, they are more enjoyable if you take it in a two biter, two biter oysters. That's a more enjoyable experience. I would recommend a two biter. The oysters are probably not the best quality, not the best tasting single oyster that you'll ever have, but the, they are pretty affordable and just the environment is awesome. The atmosphere sitting outside 
just a seafood party, a shellfish party. Actually, what really stood out to me are the, the mussels. I think the mussels were the best tasting for me. It was really good. Yeah, that's just the shellfish paradise. Okay, we're on our way back into the center of Surat Thani, and we're gonna go to one more place for a dessert this evening. So to end this street food tour, to wrap this entire Surat Thani street food tour up, uh, we, there's a street food market that sets up in the evening along the river. It's actually a beautiful setting. There's a lot of delicious food, but we're heading straight to what is another legendary food stall, but it's actually a dessert stall. Um, and she is, oh, it's not even a stall. It's like a, it's like a truck that just opens up with folds down with the different, like the edges just fold down full of desserts, full of sweets, uh, Thai sweets. This is by far the most popular and packed out place at the entire market so far. And yeah, she's known for her sweets, some of the best sweets that you can have in Surat Thani. And this is gonna be the final stop. We're gonna try a few of her desserts. It would not be an exaggeration to say this is a truckload of desserts, literally. It is a truckload. The entire bed of the truck of the van is just loaded. There must be like two dozen different types of desserts that you can choose from. All of the classic Thai desserts. There's sticky rice, there's bananas, there's coconut milk just sloshing around. And that's just like a sea of colorful desserts. Everybody that's standing around is getting takeaway. Um, so you have to get a queue number for takeaway. But then they do have some seating over here. Oh, a lot of seating over here is in the end. You don't need to take a queue, no queue number. You can just order off the menu if you sit down. You can choose your different combinations. They put them into the bowl, they add in some syrup, some sweet syrup, and they add in ice, and then they add in coconut milk, fresh coconut milk. Okay, so this one is ramit, which is a mix of everything. Here you can see. I don't know what these little pink things in. What are, do you know what it is? I'm not totally sure. There's corn in here, there's slices of coconut, there's lot chong, which are the green pandan noodles, um, and there's, it's just a mix of everything. Let's, oh, let's get that little pink, pink little thing. Oh, there's even some fruits and some, all sorts of stuff. Mm. Yeah. It's like sweet coconut milk. You get combinations of ingredients that you get. There was some kind of a jelly, jelly in that bite. I think it was a piece of taro as well, like the starchy taro. It's just cold, it's refreshing, it's coconutty, and not too sweet. I especially like the strands of coconut in there. Okay, Michael, let's switch. This one is the same, the same soup but with taptim krab, which are water chestnuts, and as well as kanun, which is jackfruit. Mm. I like this combination. The, the crunch of the, they call, they're, they're, they're called taptim krab. I'm not totally sure what's on the outside, but the inside is a, a water chestnut. And then it kind of has like a jelly around the outside, like ultra sweet, almost like ultimate banana taste of the jackfruit really ripe jackfruit, contrasted with the coconut milk with that salty, sweet contrast. atmosphere here and great Thai desserts. It's been an amazing day and probably looking back, yeah, definitely my favorite thing was beginning breakfast this morning, rice and curry, pao rak gang. That was, that was the winner, that was the highlight. I can eat rice and curry every day of my life. So that's gonna wrap up the tour. I'm gonna have all the information in the description box below everywhere we ate so you can check them out. And I wanna say a huge thank you to my friend Pitan. Um, he's from Suratani and he recommended some of the restaurants in this video to me, so thank you. And your parents as well. 
and thanks again for watching. Remember to subscribe, click thumbs up, um, and also turn on that little bell icon so that you immediately get notified of the next video that I publish. Good night from Surat Tani, and I will see you on the next video.